Hey everybody, it's Fall Fox. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm up in my office because I'm on my computer where I'm going to be showing you all of the secrets that I have from my 3D printer. And by secrets, I mean the Kira settings that I use. I've been getting this question a lot in my Instagram DMs as well as in comments on YouTube and they're asking what are the settings that I typically use for my 3D printer. Now I want to preface this video off by saying that having my settings is not going to automatically mean that your 3D printer is going to print with the quality that I get. Your 3D printer is going to be different than everyone else's 3D printer. Even if we both have the same exact printer, there's going to be different variables in both of our situations that may interfere with the print quality. For example, you may have your 3D printer in the garage and it may be colder in the garage, whereas I have mine in my basement where the temperature is the same as it is in the house. So please don't think that printer settings are the end all be all of your printer working flawlessly because number one, you have a 3D printer, it's never going to work flawlessly. Number two, you're just going to have to accept that sometimes your prints are going to fail and you're not going to have a good reason for it. And number three, after I tell people where I get my settings from, I always try to tell them, make sure that your 3D printer is dialed in and dialing in your printer is different again for everyone's 3D printer. But what that mostly means is the basics of 3D printing maintenance. Make sure your bed is level, make sure that you don't have nozzle clogs, make sure that your filament can and unravel freely into the printer. So whenever you put these settings into place, then your prints will hopefully come out a lot better. Now that I've got all that out of the way, let's get onto my computer into Cura and I will show you where I get my settings from as well as how I install them. All right, so I've got Cura opened up right now on my computer and where I got my files from is from another YouTube channel and you probably have heard of him if you do any kind of 3D printing research, but it's a channel called Chep. I don't know if that's an acronym, it probably is an acronym for something, but it's escaping my mind right now. But he has a lot of great beginner resources as well as advanced resources too on how to set up your printers and how to dial them in. And another great thing that he does is he has these Cura profiles that you can download and then import into your own Cura software and he tends to keep them updated for each release of Cura. So right now here you can see that he's got the Cura update for 4.8 and he also has older Creality profiles over here as well if you for some reason liked using a different version of Cura. So I will put that in the links down below for you guys to download the profiles as well as his YouTube channel as well. I definitely recommend checking it out. He better explains all of the technical reasons why these settings work and why they're the way that they are. So in Cura, if you go on to the right side and you go up to profile, you can then click this arrow and it will bring up a bunch of different profiles. Whenever you first download Cura, you'll probably only have these first four default profiles up at the top. And these are perfectly fine. I used to print with these way back in the day and they worked great for me until they didn't. That's what kind of set me on my journey of discovering printer settings and downloading a lot of people's different printer settings and figuring out what works best for my machine. Now down here, you can see these three custom profiles and these are all of Chep's custom profiles that I've already downloaded. So you can see two of these are actually for 4.7, but they, they've been working perfectly fine with 4.8 for me and this one down here is from 4.8 as you can see in the file naming convention so let's say you've already gone down into the description and you've clicked on these settings and you've got them downloaded so how do you get these into Cura? all you have to do is go down to manage profiles and as you can see here it'll give you all of the profiles that you already have installed in Cura. and all that you need to do in order to add another profile is click import then go into the file folder where you had all of your Cura profiles downloaded to click on whatever one you want. I'm gonna just use this NinjaFlex one because I don't have that installed and I, I don't print with Nin NinjaFlex, but hey, what it'll work for this. You just hit okay, close, and it's right there for you to use. I've been using these settings and there's only a couple little tweaks that I make to them and they've been working perfectly fine for me. You may import these and they may not work on your printer and you have to kind of do your own little investigative work to figure out what is causing the issue. I'm sorry to sound like a broken record about that, but I have to preface it because so many people think that having just these settings that someone gave them from a print that they had and they showed and they're like, I didn't get the same result. And it's not all about the settings. It's about so much more than that. I will walk you through these settings that I never typically change in any of these. As for the print speed, as it is at 50 millimeters per second, whenever you first start printing, I would recommend that you print at about 50 to 80 millimeters per second because the faster you prints go, the more issues you're gonna have. And it really becomes a little bit tricky to kind of diagnose what's going on. So usually whenever people tell me that they're having printer failures, I the first thing I 
always say is like, is your bed level? I mean, like it sounds like a, you know, did you turn it on and off again kind of a answer, but it's usually, is your print bed level? Are there any nozzle clogs? And then I will say, how fast are you printing at? And typically if you bump that printer speed down, you will have better results. I have been able to print at as high as 120 millimeters per second without having any kind of issues. But again, it really depends on your printer and it really depends on the model and things like that. As for everything under this travel bar, I do not mess with anything here. This is what I actually kind of consider the secret sauce to these settings. Ever since I had these um, retraction settings set to a little bit higher of a speed as well as a little bit of a longer distance, I have had such smoother prints that came out. I actually altered my own settings to have this kind of a setting in there before I even downloaded these because I watched one of his videos on this. And again, I will link that for you guys down below. His video on this like retraction kind of hack is pretty good and it'll explain it way better than I could possibly try. As for this cooling bar, I don't mess with anything down here. And as for this mesh fixes, everything under here, I don't mess with. Chef also has a great explanation video on why that's important. From what I gathered, it essentially is smoothing the meshes within your 3D print so that your printer is making less decisions about where to go and it's just going to be a little bit smoother for you. And for the generate support, this is something you can mess with. Again, like in my previous video where I showed you, you could do your own custom supports. That could be something you could want to do here. Editing slash, I just finished filming Robin here and I'm just popping in to let you know that I do typically change the density of my infill. I usually will have it at 10% because that makes it a lot easier for me to get all of these supports off. Again, it's one of those things that you kind of run the risk of maybe your supports failing, but I haven't really had an issue with my supports being at 10% infill and I'm just going to keep going until it doesn't work for me anymore. So that's just a little tip. You can always set your infill settings for your support to be a little bit lower so that it's a lot easier for you to get the supports off whenever everything's done. Infill is where I will usually change. I typically like to go lower. I typically will print in between like the 15 to 20 percent range whenever it comes to printing my prop. You know what you're going to be doing with the prop after you print it. So if you're going to be using something like XTC 3D which is a pourable resin and a self-leveling resin that's going to add a lot of structure and a lot of support to your 3D print. So you really don't need to have a lot of you know infill in there because it's going to be completely covered in resin so it's going to be pretty no substantial in that regard. This material field here, this may be something that you want to personally change. It This really depends on an outside factor of what type of filament you're printing with. I almost exclusively print with Saltec PLA and it really likes to print at this 200 degrees and having the build plate at 50 degrees. As for build plate adhesion, this is like a personal problem that I have. I have been printing on glass beds and I'm really used to printing on mirror beds. Again, this is personal preference, but I have been printing with rafts for like the past month or so whenever I've been using these glass beds and I've had zero printer failure so I'm gonna just stick with the rafts and that's that's where I'm at with that one. But you can kind of mess around and again trial and error and see which one works best for you and your print. But yeah that's all there is to it so make sure your printers are all nice and tuned up, download these settings and print to your heart's content. <laughs> Anyways guys thank you so much for watching as always and if there are any other questions that you may have or anything I didn't really cover that you have other questions about just leave them down in the comments below. And as always, I will see you guys next time.